Okay, so the whole series of these videos is to do the simplest uh, way of doing things. And I think one of the simplest way of tackling a camo is to put down the base color as we've done here. So obviously we've got the light color on the bottom, straightforward, we've masked it. We've now put on the base color, which is the gray. We spoke about working from light to dark. And then obviously you've got to put the camo on. So you've got a few options out there. First of all, you can buy straightforward stickers that basically go on, stick them onto your model very easy. You just put them down and then obviously you just spray your green on and away you go. Now I've used these and I use them a lot on 70 second scale because I think it works really, really well. If you want to see that particular build, pop over and have a look at the Armour Hobbies Hurricane, which we used the mask set for, and it turned out, I think, absolutely spectacular. First time I've used them on a small scale, and it just works. And it's so straightforward and easy, no problem at all. But that's great for 70 second scale, but when you move up then into 48th, and then predominantly into sort of 30 second, what can happen is, is that the hard edge of using a solid mask can just make it feel a little bit wooden, shall we say, just not very, you know, effective. You want a slightly softer edge onto that camo, especially the way that the RAF did it in World War II, are being sprayed on and things like that. It's not like a hard edge one that you use, they're slightly faded. So you've got a couple of options of how to do that one. The first one is to use a paper mask, put it down and you leave a small gap, just a couple of mil between obviously, you know, the actual paper and the surface of the model. This difference in height then can actually cause uh, a sort of diffusion on that edge and it's not quite as hard. It's there, but you're shooting it, but you've got a little bit of fuzziness around and that's because it's not laying flat on that surface. And that's a particular one we're going to use. Other options are, you can obviously use tack worms. So we've got this, which is obviously oil-free uh, putties, as you can see like this. These are great because you can put them on, you can work them around into a worm pattern right the way over. And then the curve of this, so if you're looking at it like this, you see, if we roll this out a little bit to show you what we mean, this curve on a giant scale here, as you can see, gives you that diffused edge because obviously this is your, your hard edge as it comes down on here, but because you, you've got that roll, that sort of semicircle underneath, what's gonna happen then, obviously that will diffuse the paint as well, giving you a slightly softer edge, and that's great. Your last option, obviously, is just to freehand it, and to be honest with you, if your airbrushing skills are okay and you're happy about doing it, that's the quickest and easiest, and I do think probably the most realistic way of doing it as well, because you can just add a little bit of a softer edge or a harder edge, so forth and so on, and it's very straightforward. You're just starting off methodically working through each patch right the way through. But for us, what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to somewhat cheat, do it on the cheap and everything else. So what I've done is I've taken the instructions and this is our color call that's just down on here as you can see no problem at all and it's the basic camo pattern that we've come to expect on spitfires okay so what i've done then is we've blown it all up by 230 percent so i've just popped this in the old printer uh, scan a copy out, and we've just blown it up by 230%. So although it's not an exact science on here, you can see now that we've got these patterns, uh, which then we can just cut these out and we can stick them onto the model and away we go. Another option is, is obviously we can put tape over this, 40 mil tape, and then draw around it, cut them out and do it. And if you want to see how I use that particular technique, have a look at the Vulcan build, because when we did the Vulcan, that's exactly what we did, because we did want a nice hard edge camo. This particular one, what we're going to do is going to cut this out. The trouble that we've got is, one is that this is two dimensional, this is flat. That means it's not taking into account all the curves and having to curve it round onto this. So we are going to have to sort of make adjustments and allowances for it. And we might even have to pop in and do a little bit of masking work and tidy up as round. Because again, this is on a two dimensional surface. So around up here, for instance, up over the top of the cowling, it's just saying it just goes round. Well, it doesn't, it's not as straightforward as that because obviously it needs to curve and go over the front and everything else. So the other thing as well is that I haven't got we have got for the sides here a one to one scale job of it in here so that fits perfectly down on here for what we'll be doing on this one unfortunately though for the top view not quite as straightforward so what we've had to do is make it up so down in here you can see we've got the wing section we've got the tail section so if we just pop these in here so as you can see, this will go in just down in here, somewhat like uh, that, I think it is. And there we go. And then we've got the other wing section on here. So that is gonna fit somewhat just like that again. And then 
Last up here, we've got the actual top of it, if you like, and then this little guy will come down and is gonna go over it just like that. And then that gives us a one-to-one -one scale representation of the Spitfire just like that again so we can mask up so tops of the wings very straightforward very very easy so all we're going to do here is we're going to draw and then cut out this paper template so we know we only want this green section in here and we want the green section underneath the roundel now my copier for some reason didn't take into account we did it in black and white the actual roundel but we can see where it is and our roundel is going to go over the top of that so we don't have to worry the other thing as well is obviously we can just take and cut the paper here and then obviously we can cut the paper here because we just need this green section in the middle is what we're going to paint so we just need both halves of it so we can do that same on the edge here so we can just cut so we don't actually have to take out all of this in one this one on this side is a little bit more let me just look at it in the normal way as you can see down on here so down in here it's a little bit more complex because we've got this bar of it coming up but again what we're looking to do is use the masking for the actual gray so we can come in here we can we know how this line basically goes if i can find the pen there we go so this little guy here is just going to run around like that uh, underneath there again and then this one in here if I remember rightly I've got to remember how this sort of goes it sort of goes around in here like this and then there we'll see it'll join up underneath there so again this is how this one's going to work down in here so we just need to sort of allocate them in so what we can actually do is this gray section here for instance we can just cut this out and then we'll stick it straight down on top of the wing that's no problem at all and then what we can do is we can either use a little bit of tack uh, we're using a bit of tape sorry and we can literally just fold it back on its so you have a little bit like this and then obviously we just rotate this over and make a little tube it's a little bit of a bounciness stick it underneath there and then hopefully it's enough just to keep it slightly above or we can actually use tack so we got here and we can make up little donuts or sausages or little balls just put the piece onto it and then go across again it's not an exact science but it works it's one of these ones that actually it sounds more complicated than it actually is so what i'm going to do is going to cut some of these shapes out get them all ready again we can do it down in here for the tail so we've got this tail one as well so we can actually just cut this one out completely pop it on this one here same thing pop it on as well so that's done and what we're also going to do is we're not going to attempt to cover this all in paperwork and spray it in one we're going to do it in sections so what we can actually do is on here on this tail for instance we can just do the tails once they're done we can then move on to the next section perhaps we'll do the fuselage once those are done we can work on the wings and then we can work on the side of the fuselage in bits so i'm not going to try and do it all in one and then just spray it all in one because that's I guess going to be a hassle and also for holding it and things like that as well so what we're going to do is we're going to do this in sections and methodically work our way through so as you can see we've started and we've just popped these on the great thing about this is you can actually follow the panel lines as they're actually on the kit as well so you can really line this up but it doesn't have to be an exact science as you see we've got them on here and these are all just tacked into place down in here underneath here to be honest it's going to be just a normal one in there so what we're planning on doing is spraying the back end and this one here so we'll get this sprayed in as well all right so down in here it basically is green up to this one but we've got the little um uh, painted in area here already that's masked up so we can unmask this afterwards so it's just the green section up here you're going to be green in here and again they're all done in there we've just got this one to go on here so this guy butts right up against the the actual tail itself and then it's just going to sit in there like that so again we're just going to have a couple of bits of these and you only need tiny bits we're not trying to make this stand off by you know a couple of mil we just want it to be very very fine so we're just grabbing a little bit like this so as you can see it's not very much down onto this and then obviously this can come along and we're just using the panel lines as a guide as you can see so our one on here it's just this outer edge we're going to be spraying obviously in here and that is it but you can see how you can use the the original ones in there but again it's only a guide but it is a nice way of sort of showing it and everything else so what happens what we're going to do is the reason for doing that bit is we can spray that bit without coming near here and then what we'll do is around here we'll just do this edge in here so that's fine we'll do down in there and we can do in here and we might just put a little bit just on this edge 
just so it's in and then obviously the next bit will be on the other side because the next gray band will come up on here so again it's just one of those sort of areas but it's easier to work that back area let it dry because you can hold the wings uh, so you can get in there spray those areas no problem at all have a look at it okay a mask it check it if you're happy good to go you can move on to the next areas instead of perhaps unmasking it you've got loads of little fixes so this way you can fix everything on the fly as we make our way round on this one so that is what we are left with cut out on that side because obviously we've nicked the bit of the tail we've nicked the bar in the middle and again always overcut too far so over here this is the one for this tail section up in here and we can see most of it's gray apart from obviously you've got the line which naturally i think falls in here like that so again this is one of those areas where you can say right okay well look we can do that because we, if we cut that in there we can put that section in which will then protect that area and we'll be good to go so what we'll do is we will say right okay so we can because we can run to this line in here because we haven't got anything to worry about in there because we've sort of used it <clears throat> so let's just cut that off okay and then obviously we're just going to be masking up the gray bit so again we're just going to come along in here and again nice good sharp scissors and we can curve it right round a little bit further obviously so it acts as a mask Okay, so we're all good and then I say you can then come along and we just grab a couple of bits of our tack and again you literally don't overdo it if you have it too high all it's going to be left you'll be left with a fuzzy edge underneath so again you can pop this on so I'm going to remember how it goes so it's going to be coming quite low so we're just going to pop this down in here I think it'll be fine across the back maybe a little bit more of a pull so that's it on there just like that and then we can come along and then we can mark this one in it's going to sit just down like that so that's happy so we're going to obviously spray green in here um, onto that one or have we done it the wrong way around hold on let me just check <coughs> No, you see, we've cut the wrong bit there. That's the bit we don't want because we're going to make that green. So this is the thing. Always don't sort of run in there and everything else. So this is actually easier than we thought then. So this one is just going to be a case of, right, well, this is going to go across the tail. It's a smaller bit than we actually thought. So this is nice and straightforward. So we go, tack, goes in and on. I must admit, I could do with some new attack because this one's a bit iffy. And then again, just going to place that down and in. <coughs> so that's going to run it just straight forward down in there. So technically, th this area, you might want to put something in. So the great thing about it, you can use tack. So if you want to mask off a very small little area like this, it's just as easy to pop in like this, a little bit of tack, just to protect it. And then there we go, we're good to go. We're going to spray on the top here, and on this side we're going to be spraying on the bottom half. So that's pretty good. So what we're going to do, we're going to pop over to the spray bay, and we'll just spray this area here to here. And then obviously that will be fine in there, good to go. And then we'll then do this side. We'll unmask it, make sure we're on the right plan. If we are, it's going to be a case of rinse and repeat the entire model. So for this particular one, the green we're going to use is the RAF Dark Green by AK. So your number for this one is RC286. I love this stuff. It sprays so, so nice. It's a gorgeous sort of satin finish. Um, and it's very, very forgiving as well. So what we're going to do is, oops, we're going to put a top on our colour because otherwise we're going to tip it everywhere like we've just done. I forgot we hadn't got the top. Okay so we just quickly give that a clean. Okay where's my top? Yeah, that might help stopping that flying out. Okay so check our flow that's all pretty good. So when you're spraying this type of thing you don't want to be flooding it or anything else like that it just wants to be a straightforward pulse 
So again, it's just going to be this thing of saying, right, okay, nice 90 degrees, very light. Again, we're not trying to flood it. We're just trying to put down a nice solid color from the top. So just run each side. You hear that sort of buzzing sound? That's fine. So that's that side. Now we do this side. Again, 90 degrees. So you're coming straight in on top of it. You don't want to be coming in from the sides or any other angle, just right on top. Now we can do the tail. So again, same thing, straight on top. Gently build it up, not flooding it on or anything else like that. Just a nice, gentle build up. So that's all looking pretty good. Right, flip around to this side. Okay, and then just down in here. And the tail, same thing. Lightly, gently. Okay, so we're just going to do just down in here. And my airbrush is just on the border. You probably hear it. Of not being able to do it but it is okay so that's all right so then just down in here I'm just gonna do over here I'm just gonna walk this up as you said okay pretty happy of how that is. So what we're going to do, we'll pop back over to the bench, get the proper camera on it, and we'll see if it's worked. So there we go, literally just come across and flick the cameras on. So this is one of those where normally you could let it dry and all the rest of it, but we want to see what we've done. And actually look at that, that's pretty good, happy with that. Okay, bring him off out the way. Ugh. Sorry, I've got to be careful where we touch this for obvious reasons. So let's just get this one off for the grand. Okay, there we go. That's happy. Tail. And obviously, don't forget to recover your bits of uh, tack because you will be able to reuse them. There we go. How good is that? We just you can see how nice and clean it's got a slightly softer edge than a hard edge camo, but it's pretty much straightforward and in there just like that. So really, really happy of how that is. So that's worked out very, very nicely indeed. Alright, so what we're gonna do now is basically rinse and repeat for the entire thing. So just make sure you keep your tack as we were saying, so you just grab all your little bits because you can reuse them many, many times. All you need to do is make sure we've got all of these back. If you pop these into a ball like this and then just squidge them all together, give them a run round, heat them up, you'll be good to go straight forward again and use them again, all right? So that's a nice thing to it. So there we go, happy of how that is. It's not gonna take too long, especially when you get in a roll with it. And to be honest, the bits around the fuselage, the curves are gonna be the hardest one. So what we'll do is in a minute, we'll do the other side and then we'll just curve it round so it joins up. Pretty straightforward, no problem at all, all right? So we're gonna carry on with it, get it all done, and then we'll have a good look.
Right, so as you can probably see, we are looking pretty darn good. We're getting there. We'll explain a few things in a minute. But technically, say, I've only been doing this, what, half an hour or so? And uh, it's one of those things where you get on a bit of a roll with it. It doesn't take too long at all. So next up, we've just got to do the areas in here. So if I've got hold of the right pieces. I'm a bit missing here somewhere. Hold on. We had him. Where's he gone? Hold on. I appear to have lost the... Perhaps that is the one. Sorry, that is the one just there. So that's the one we want for the walk line as it comes down in here, which is pretty darn good. Okay. So again, some of them you can just use normal tape. Uh, and some of them you can just even hold it. It's not really a, a thing. But uh, as long as you've got a little bit of distance, you just want a little bit of distance. As you can see, a couple of them on here, we are going to have to go around and, and revisit and do it perhaps again. But generally, I think we're pretty much where we want to be with all of this. So what we're gonna do, we'll just pop this one in here. So this is the walkway one as it comes up in here. And again, so that's that one in like that. And again, the great thing is you can just use the panel lines to line a lot of these up. So again, we've got this one uh, just down in here, which is uh, hold on, get the, the right one. So that's the, the green bit, if you like. So now we have to work on this bit. So this bit is over here. So this one is the one that's going to run over here. So we've got front of the gun area and those two areas around there. So that's pretty good. So I think one good one at the back. And as you say, once you get a bit of a feel for this, you can sort of speed it up a little bit and you're not taking your being so careful or spreading it out or keeping it evens because to be honest you don't need to do that uh, let's just pop that one down in there and then what we can do is that we can just line these up so again we'll just pop that one there working with our flaps and in there so again you can check your, your scaling as it's just down in there literally just like that so that's actually looking quite good so if we just switch over to here okay we'll just pop in here and we'll just blow these in now so again top straight down circles over where the join is so you can just put that all in first and you can work out a little bit and then shoot from the sort of side of the paper out and then again straight down over these so we get a nice crisp edge and again, we'll just do this one one and we can do a little bit of back filling We're going to weather and we're going to do a little bit more work on this green so it doesn't have to be the smoothest of smooth effects but you want to make sure you've got good solid color onto these and this gun is going to be green now these little ones just round in here what you can do is just literally put your finger on just 
just to make sure they're all in like that. And then again, same with this one here. And again, you've got the, you're gonna have the yellow stripes on those. So that is literally it. So if we just come back to this one, for the unmasked just to show that this isn't all a fluke again so there we go and then we can undo these we can undo that and there we have our spitfire painted and done very nicely pretty darn good so i'm quite happy of all of that now there's a couple of areas where it didn't quite join up so you can use your your bits like these especially if you've got curves to just put in little lumps and bumps as well if you wanted to and just to tidy areas up and like for instance down in here we have got a little bit of overspray probably just see it you could probably sand it away but if you wanted to you could take the original one the green side of it pop it down there just put the gray back on simple as that but there we go that's probably the quickest and easiest way to do that you know for starting out again there's lots of different techniques for doing it but what we'll do is we'll unmask and we can have a proper look now to see exactly what we've got. So hopefully this will unmask nice and cleanly for us all. So we can just do these. So this is the underside ones coming away. Tape everywhere. Again, so that's all nice. Tail wheel area. And then in here, I can't remember which side the joint's on now. Must be on this side somewhere. There it is. So now we can just do the banding. So that was a, a nice decision to do the banding completely separate. So that is in there now. And then again, just down underneath these. Gives us a nice harder edge effect. And then let's say this front. And right the way through. Oh, I'm proper tangled up in this now but you get the effect <laughs> ah, get it off. okay so that one last bit and there we have it one painted spitfire all done nice camo work pretty straightforward nice and easy nice basic job so what that now is ready for is if we can just find it give it a little bit of color and in here we've got the spinner we've got the gear we've got all the other parts now so we pop the spinner on it will really help to bring it all to life so there we go there's our spit looking very much the part and I think by the time we get in here obviously next up for us would be those demarcation ones on the front the yellow banding things like that a couple of little touch-ups we get the exhaust in decalin that will really make this thing pop but overall I think for a quick straightforward paint job like that really really happy